In the previous video, we discussed the powerful tagging system built into Nuke Studio and how it not only allows you to visually communicate notes and statuses of project elements, but also how you can use the tags to sort and filter your project elements efficiently. In this video, we'll be going over the editing tools. By now, you should see that Nuke Studio is more of an online editor than it is an offline editor. However, there are some basic tools that will allow you to do common editing tasks. Before we move into the editing workspace, let me just clear out this filter here. And now let's go into the workspace editing or shift F2 on the keyboard. Editing workspace gives you an additional viewer for the clip viewing on the left. And then on the right side of it, you'll have your sequence viewer. So basically I can double click any of these clips in the bin. I'll be able to to view them in the left side over here. I'll set the in and out points of where I want to insert these into the sequence. So let's assume we just got word that there's more assets that need to go into this project. What we can do is can either take and drag and drop the asset folder right into here in the project bins, or I can just right click to import, import folders, which I'll do. I know there are some TIFFs that are coming in. I'll select the TIFF folder, hit OK. And it brought those in for me. If I look at directly at the TIFF folder, we can see the new elements that came in. And the great thing about this by importing the folder is that it also imported the entire folder structure that was contained within it. So I didn't have to create any folders. I didn't have to name anything. It did that all for me just by importing that folder. So our first element here, if we take a look at that, and play through that and see the animation that's going on in there. Now, because I'm familiar with this project, or, and I may have seen like a storyboard have been briefed on it. I know that this particular element is going to go towards the end of our sequence and lay over top of this footage here as like the robot scanning it. So I could easily just take this drag and drop it, line it up on there, try to get that to fit. But I want to show you another way you can go about doing this. So I'm going to make sure I'm at the head of my clip by pressing the up arrow key. So it starts there. And rather than dragging and dropping this into the timeline, what I want to do is actually select an empty track. So that way I know it's going to go onto this track rather than on top of this track. And if I right click and go to edit, I can have the choice to insert or overwrite. If I insert, it's just going to insert between these two clips. If I overwrite, it's going to lay it on top for me. So if I would have had this track selected, it would have overwritten on top of this footage here, but that's not what we want. So with this track selected here, right click, edit, and overwrite or M on the keyboard. Hit OK. You can see now that it placed that for me on the timeline. I can't see through this element yet. The reason being is because we haven't turned on any track blending. The track blending is right here with this little stack icon. If I click that once, it sets it automatically to default, which is the overblending mode. But for this particular instance, I want to use screen so that way I can kind of see what's underneath that particular clip. So it looks like an overlay as well. All right, so it's good, good to go for now. Let's take a look at our next clip that we just received. We'll play through that one. So it's like a scanning effect. So I know this one's going to go towards the head of our sequence. Around here, what's happening is the robot's tapping its foot, matching the motion of the boy's foot. The boy looks up at the robot. The robot looks down at the boy, and this is where the robot scans the boy. So right around here, after this clip, I'm going to press the down arrow on the keyboard, take me to the end point of that and end point of the next one. And then I can right click in this here and go edit. And now this time I want to insert so that way I can place this clip in between the two other clips. I either insert here or end on the keyboard. Hit OK to maintain the clip frame count. That's fine. And then you'll see that it created that space for me and it pushed aside the timeline, pushed it down, creating space for this new clip within there. So now the robot looks down at him, scans him, and then it continues on in the sequence. So the next two elements are the same ones, just graded, one's ungraded. We'll use the ungraded one for now. And I know this is going to go kind of like a, as a screen insert here back on these panels. Rather than trying to place it on these panels at an angle and skewed, I want to go to the footage where it's kind of flat to camera and make it a little bit easier, which is towards here at the end. So once again, I want to make sure I'm at the head of my clip and press the up arrow key. I think for this instance, I'll just drag and drop it on the timeline right at the playhead. It's fine. So we had a few different methods mentioned there. The first one being the overwrite, which would overwrite on top of any other footage if it wasn't on its own track. Then we had insert, that inserted in between clips. And then I just drag and drop it right onto the timeline itself. So if I take a look at what I just put on the clip, you can see that it's actually a lot longer 
than the, the footage below it. So in this instance, we probably would want to retime it just to make sure we include everything of this animation. So if we were to look at this animation here, what's that? Play through that. Maybe we want to include all of this animation rather than just cutting it off. So that's where we'd want to retime this. A couple different ways to retime. First one being uh, the retime tool. So now this will lead me into talking about some of the editing tools, which can be found here on the left side of on this toolbar right here. These tools, the hotkeys for each of these tools will be accessed through your left hand on the keyboard by using QWERTY. So Q for this first one, W for this one, E for the next tool, R to access these tools, and then T to access this tool. So it makes it a little easy to access those with hotkeys. Now, depending if I press Q on the keyboard, I can press it multiple times and it begins to toggle through all the available tools that are within the multi-tool set. So if I click and hold on this, I can actually select the tool I want to use. The multi-tool pretty much encompasses most of these editing tools. There are a few exceptions and majority of the time you'll be using the multi-tool. And we'll come back around to this to show you how these other tools are kind of incorporated into that. Next tool in here is just the track select tool. So select track to the right, to the left. It's pretty self-explanatory. The one below that is the slip clip and slide clip tool. So if we select the slip clip tool and we'll select the footage, if I click and hold the left mouse button, you'll see the little frame numbers below the, the shot on the timeline. So the ones in the center, of course, is my duration, my current frame range. The ones outside of the frame range are the handles. So I can see I have a number of handles on each side or extra frames that I have to work with. Also, we can see the time code offset right there. And up in the viewer window, as we slide it along or slip it along, we're able to see how the in and out point changes for that clip. So you can see where the new in and out points will be as I move this along. So I'm gonna hit undo on that. Moving on to the next tool below that, we have our roll edit and ripple edit and retime tool. So the roll edit tool selected, if I select between these two clips here, you can see that little orange highlight and change this position now by clicking on the left mouse button and then dragging. This will change the out point of the preceding clip and the end point of the following clip. Undo that. Select the next one, the ripple edit tool. Basically, ripple edit tool will allow me to change the out point of the clip I have selected and set that. Let's see where the new out point should be for that one, as well as the end point if I want to change that. And it's going to move everything on the timeline for me accordingly. Finally, that brings us to the retime tool in that set. That's the one I wanted to use for this particular shot here. So with the multi-tool selected, so I can select this shot, then pressing R on the keyboard to select my retime tool. Click and drag the end of it, end of the shot right there, and there we go, we've retimed it to 436.8% there. So that's one method to retime a clip on the timeline. Another one would be, let's say this one right here, we need to retime this one to fit or fill in this little bit of extra space here that's missing. What we can do is open up our spreadsheet. So that remember that's in the conforming or you can just go right click windows, new spreadsheet view if you wanna do it that way. But if I select these two clips, oops, and compare the duration of each of those. So here we go, we have those selected. Let's check out the duration. The longer clip's 29, the shorter clip's 24. So I want the 24 to change to 29. And there we go, we can see that filled it in for us and retimed it to 82.8%. So that's another method of how you can retime for that. Let me go back into my editing workspace. All right. And then finally, just below that retime tool, we have our razor tool and join tool. And that's just gonna cut up our shots for us on the timeline. So if I have the razor tool selected, let's select the razor tool anywhere I click, it's gonna cut the shot for me. I can razor all, if I wanna cut through all tracks rather than just the selected track. You can see it's cutting through these ones below here as well. I'm gonna undo that a couple times, there we go. And then finally, there's the join tool. So this will join the footage together if it's all of the same clip. If you made any cuts on accidents, you can just join that back together. Another way you can cut these shots is you need to select my multi-tool again, pressing Q on the keyboard. Wherever the playhead is at, you can cut it at the playhead just by pressing C on the keyboard. So if I had that selected, press C, it cuts it for me. If I want to cut through all tracks, I can hold down shift and press C and it'll cut through all tracks for me at that point. Once again, I'll undo that, keep my tracks together. So that's going to bring me back up top to the multi-tool. I just want to show you how the multi-tool kind of incorporates some of the other tools within it. So depending on where I hover 
my mouse in the shot, you'll see that there's different icons that appear. So if I hover it towards the bottom here, you can see this is gonna act as the slip clip tool. If I go to the top, it can be like the slide tool. Be able to slide that around. If I do that, and join this piece back together. There we go. And then if I go in between the two clips, be a roll edit. I grab from the end of it and ripple edit for it. So that's all just using the, the single multi-tool there. Makes it a little bit easier than having to use the hotkeys to go through each of those tools when you can just use the multi-tool for a lot of these tasks.